All right, nice to see you everyone and uh, welcome my new friends, David and Kelvin. All the other ones are my super old friends. They have been around for a while. Um, so you guys are new to my class, but are you, were you in my logic? CE241, either online or something. Good, good, okay. So you know how to use Altispice because we are going to use Altispice a lot this semester. Great. Um, so let's start from the scope of this class. It, this is a four credit class, as you know. Um, we have labs on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to like 11. Let's take a look at that. It's about three hours for the morning session and three hours for the afternoon session, all right? Um, it doesn't matter which session you, you, you want to come over, come to the lab, because we only have eight students, you know? Um, sometimes, so for, for example, last semester I taught it, a lot of students want to do it remotely, which is also fine, because I have created all these tutorials here. If you search for, I just open a browser, and even on your smartphone, you can open electronics.com, so I just replace the, the letter E at the very beginning and make it into YI, electronics.com. You can see these courses, these uh, short links to the shortcuts to the labs and classes I'm teaching this semester. And also you can find these classes in teaching, in this tag. You can also find out the uh, classes I taught in the past, in the past four years um, when I came to the, to the Ford. The reason some of the links are bad is because the server I paid is only 200 bucks a year and they don't allow me to put too much on, on the website. So that's why I started sending all the recorded lectures to YouTube instead of put everything on the server. It's not sustainable, you can imagine. You know, if I teach for 30 years, <laughs> they needed to purchase a lot of servers for me and I won't be able to afford it. So anyway, YouTube is great, just a link. Um, so you can you can find out all the recorded videos will be links, for example. So you can access to the lectures here, right? You just click digital electronics, or you can come back just to the web page. Electronics is easy, and you can see the same link here as well. Just click. You can find out the syllabus. I didn't print out every single copy for you since I know you will throw it out pretty soon. So you can find the electronic version on the website. Just click. And you can see the office hour will be remote, but because some of the professors are not really comfortable to let students get into the office area, but most of the most of them are. So I don't know if you guys are allowed to get in there, but I see, I saw some students were there in the morning, so I think it's fine. Um, so I will log into it's Microsoft Teams. It's not Zoom. Um, so it's very similar, you just click and it's going to open a window in your know, browser and you can do a remote meeting to ask me questions if you want. So it's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the morning. And if you want to come the, to the office, I will be there as well. Either way, which we'll prefer, okay? But please wear masks. And also you need uh, your green pass. If you have a red pass, no, red is not pass, right? If you have a red tag on your phone, you cannot even be here today. So hopefully you have that green pass um, to be here physically. Am I recording? Okay. Uh, the labs, these are, oh no, labs, seriously? Oh. So that's a se section two is um, eight to eleven oh five, and the other one is eleven fifteen to two twenty. And at the very beginning, you can find out you probably want to you know be there to ask questions because uh, the software sometimes is, if it's the, your first time to use it, you may have a lot of questions. But after that, it's gonna get easier and easier along the way. And a lot of times you don't even want to be there. You can directly do it one day ahead because everything has been posted. It's, I made really good tutorials. <laughs> so just follow, right? Just follow and get it done, okay? 
and the labs are in where? Is that 2771? I didn't put the location here, did I? No? Oh, sorry for that. I think it's 2771, right? Okay, so the computer lab. And you can see the course description and the textbook. This is required since we are going to cover a lot of things in this textbook. Highly recommend you buy it since you probably will use it a lot later on as well. Uh, this one is a standard VOSI textbook. If you go to other institutions, they are probably going to use this textbook. Um, so this, this guy is my PhD advisor. And this guy is a person, um, you know, another professor who has the first last name, uh, the same last name, but they are not related. And that was a she. And they worked in the same department. They co-authored the same book, but not here in another computer architecture textbook. They have the same last name, but they are not husband and wife. <laughs> Anyway, so she transferred, that's a college in California, and then um, he transferred to UNLV when I was in UNLV as a graduate student. So he became the, you know, the person in the, in the department who specialized in uh, digital VSI design, Verilog, verification, you know, ASIC design, but in the digital side. So my advisor was on the analog side. Now there are only two different aspects of this IC design field analog or digital so there are two people they only need one for analog one one for digital in the department so you know UNLV University of Nevada Las Vegas so he, he's an analog guy and his colleague past colleague and she she works on the digital side anyway so this is a really good textbook as well but it's optional for this class so these are the course topics So in the first few weeks, we are going to design a ADC. It's called Analog to Digital Converter. You know, the word is analog. For example, temperature, humidity, light intensity, speed. All of these signals are analog signals, right? Because they're continuous signals. And the reason we can um, log this data into a computer and show them on the spreadsheet, because we have a... DAC. It's called DAC, but um, that's for some people in the majors are not actually electrical engineering or computer engineering. If you are in this field, you are not going to use that DAC board or a box a lot because we are going to build the ADCs by ourselves. It's pretty easy, actually. You can directly buy an ADC chip, IC, or you can directly use the ADC, which is analog to digital converter. You can use the ADC from a microcontroller as well. They usually have the ADC. Hi, Brian. No problem. I got lost two of yesterday. So it's a super remote classroom, but it's nice. See the screen like a theater. It's free. All right. So DAC is called analog to digital converter. Wait, ADC is analog to digital converter. DAC is digital to analog converter. No weird, right? We have so many people, you know, that take the efforts to convert the analog signal to digital so we can see on the computer. And then we convert it back to analog. It has its applications, trust me. So um, where, think about it, where, where do you need a DAC? No, DAC. So where do we need the ADC? Let's start from the either one. Temperature, that's a monitor, right? Temperature sensor, humidity sensor. Light sensor. What is camera? What is a camera? Is a camera ADC or DAC? So the camera is a CMOS IC chip. I mean, more than cameras. Okay. Uh, right after the lens, it has a IC chip. It's called CMOS Imager, and you are going to learn what are CMOS is. And you have done CMOS. NMOS and PMOS simulation in, in logic. So you know what are they? Um, so if you have these CMOS, A majors has a real pixels, 
there are actually every single pixel is a little light sensor. It's a photo dial. And the photon hit the photo dial is going to generate the photo current. So it's electrical current. And if the photon is very in intensive, then it's going to generate the higher current. And then you have a TIA, trans impedance amplifier, to convert that current into voltage. So here we get voltage. And is that analog or digital? Analog. See the intensity of the light is continuous. It is like from super dark to a little bit brighter, brighter, the brightest. Right? So you have all these different levels of intensity of the light. So this is an analog signal, right? Even here, the light source is analog. If I turn on one light, I got a light sensor, I'm getting a lower current, photo current. So it's, it's analog signal. And then convert it into TI, use the TI to convert it into voltage. Once we got a voltage, okay, it's somewhere we can, so we, we need you guys, electrical and computer engineers, to convert it into digital. And after digital, it's easy because the computer can directly um, acquire that signal easily, use a very established uh, digital communication port, can be many different types of ports. It can display it or it can log into a spreadsheet. You, you can use Python, C++ to process it. Doesn't matter what, what, which tool you are going to use. That's how that works. So um, that's where we need an ADC, right? ADC can be an image sensor, light sensor. And for DAC, it's mostly about robots. If we want to send a signal in a digital format, then we need to actuate a motor, for example. And the motor is being actuated by analog signal, not digital. And digital is just zero and ones. But analog is a continuous voltage. You can turn on the motor faster, slower. So sometimes if you have a, a series of commands being stored in the computer as a digital signal, you want to send send the signal to a actuator, like a motor, like a piezo electric plate or something being used in the industry. Robots, you need a DAC oftentimes. Okay? And they are all integrated circuits. You can directly buy it. One dollar, two dollars, very low cost. So you guys are going to build some ideal ADCs and DACs in this class in the first few weeks. You probably are wondering, we don't even know what are transistors yet, and how can we build an ADC and DAC? So these ones are ideal ADC and DACs, just the block. And you can directly, I, I have the, the block already um, attached to the lab, so you can directly just make all the links and simulate it so you can see all the signals are being digitized and then convert it back to analog. You'll see on, on Tuesday, actually tomorrow, right? You'll be able to see how that works. Actually next week. So tomorrow will be an easier lab. And next week we're going to do ADC and DACs, ideal version. C5 is a, well, this is C5. We, we did it uh, two years ago. I have been showing this to other students, but you guys haven't seen that. Wow, shadow. That's a problem, though. So these are fabricated in C5 technology. Uh, five stands for 500 nanometer technology. So these are amplifiers. We fabricated, uh, I think, three years ago with the students in my analog class, analog electronics. The MOSIS is not doing, so the company is called MOSIS. So they are not doing this fabrication for uh, university in the US for free anymore. So we are not going to work with MOSIS. But I'll let you know, there's something more exciting going on. Um, but you can see that here's the IC chip, right, with all the pins. And this is the package. It's a 40 pin dip, dip, EIP. They are deep pins. Not the dips, not wrench or something, deep. Right? So here's the lid. And in the middle is the IC chip, the silicon chip. So heard about integrated circuit design? 
and know you your smartphone probably has hundreds of IC chips, including the CPU, the memory, and everything. So they are being built on silicon. So the little black thing in the middle, the square shape, is a silicon die. And it is able to integrate millions or even billions of transistors into that little area. So the huge chip package is not the chip itself. The chip is just the middle thing. It's a silicon wafer. And you couldn't see all these bounding wires. Hopefully you can see a little bit, but it can be pretty difficult to visualize it because there are all, uh, all the wires, the, it's called bounding wires, are super thin, are super tiny. So they are making the connections between the metal pads here and the wafer. They can, can you see the wires? A little bit about the wires, right? A lot, actually. So these, just connecting, it's like a radiation, re, re, you know. Uh, yeah. So, so these metal rectangles are metal pass contacts. And the silicon chip has metal contacts, but super tiny around it. So you need to make the connection using all these thin wires to these metal pads. And then these metal pads are connecting to these pins. So you can plug into the breadboard and can make the connection to the chip. Is that making sense? Okay. So the way to uh, connect these bounding wires from the wafer to the pads is literally use your finger and, I'm kidding. There is a wire bounder 30,000 bucks. I bought it two years ago. It's still in the lab. I haven't touched it that yet. I'm having a student working with me in the lab trying to get a tutorial so you guys can have a chance to bond it. You have to do everything under your microscope. Definitely not your finger. Yeah. It's not gold. It's copper. If it's gold, it's not here anymore. It's going to be in my home. <laughs> so these are the uh, wafers and packages. Uh, there's a chance we may not be able to get a package. So you, you'll get uh, the silicon dyes instead. So see, these are the silicon dyes. Did you see that? Only four, four of them. And you can place them on the wire bounder and make the connections to the package. So these packages are, you can, you can buy them, affordable. And you can place these dies into the middle and make the connections. And that's how that works. Okay. Definitely not with your fingers, right? Under the microscope with a micro manipulator. Okay. This is called C5 technology, 500, 500 nanometer technology. 500 nanometer is the lens of the transistor. Um, we're not going to, so, so for the labs, you are still going to use the C5, but there's, a, um, there, there's one different option for you guys this semester. So that's why I ask you guys to sign NDA. It hasn't, hasn't signed NDA yet. You have it, you have it. So this is a TSMC 180 nanometer technology. It's not compared to 500, it's a bit smaller, it's three times smaller. And so the most, the smallest technology right now available uh, at TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the most popular one right now on, on this planet. So the most popular technology right now, which means um, most, which uh, so the company is making most of the chips with, which is 65 nanometer technology. And it does pretty well even in the RF domain. And the second most popular one is 180 techno nanometer technology. Okay. 
so you can tell we are possibly there will be a chance I will get you guys to work on a few examples with this one it's the second the most popular technology on this planet so you guys will be it's actually pretty it's very exciting for me because it's gonna be the first time um, for undergraduates to try to fabricate something, uh, although you probably won't be able to fabricate anything in the class, but next year, if I'm teaching senior STEM again, I'm doing this this year, and my students are going to fabricate chips using this one. And if you are taking senior STEM next year, if I'm teaching that again, you'll get a chance to fabricate something under this technology in your class. Senior STEM is also considered as a class, right? So you guys will be the first in Colorado to fabricate chips in your classroom in Colorado. And we'll be the fourth in the US. What are the other three? Cornell, Berkeley, and Carnegie Mellon. So uh, we have funding for senior STEM students, $1,000 per student. Um, hopefully you can get it. Uh, so the cost to do this on a five, um, five square millimeter die silicon the cost is five thousand bucks it's considered very 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 affordable if you do it in a company and you are not working with mpw multi-project wafer the cost will be a million a million or five hundred thousand dollars just for prototyping so the bar is high semiconductor industry is different but i will let you guys know one thing and it doesn't matter you're trying to pursue a software career or anything else. You may or may not change your mind starting from this class, since I can consider this class will be the most one of the most important classes in your curriculum. And if you do this in your senior sum, you can get a job immediately because not too many people can do it. There are so many barriers to get into get access to this technology. First, cadence which is a EDA tool. Um, I, we purchased that tool two years ago and installed that in the server, and it's up running right now. So after I sign the NDA, I'm gonna get it back to the company called Muse, which is a multi-project wafer, third-party company, and they are going to collect all the different designs, including ours. So the wafer is like this size, for example. It's, it's actually not, I'm not doing scale, but probably like this size per wafer. And our design will be like this here. And that's 5,000 bucks. And they're collecting hundreds of other designs from other companies or universities. So that's why you can afford it with this price. Otherwise, it's $500,000. So that's, that's uh, well, what are we going to do? So for the senior SAM team, I'm teaching this semester. Uh, so this, it's being scheduled to send out for fabrication in January next year. And we'll get the project done probably before December. And um, yeah, we designed the ADC. And you guys will have a chance to practice on that. Okay. You know, the purpose to come to the college is to get a job. Very clear and straightforward. Um, I just made it super straightforward. If you know how to do this, if you have done the ABC design here and fabricated and test it, you'll get a job easily. And the, the start, of pay, uh, start payment won't be as high as you know a software engineer in, in Google, but you can get $120,000 easily, even higher. And after five years, probably $200,000. And um, won't be higher, won't be way higher after that. If you are coding for Google or Facebook, you know, the first year probably hundred thousand dollars, a hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the third year will be double, three hundred thousand dollars. In ten years, you are probably getting like five hundred thousand dollars. And with the stock and everything else, you, some some people can get a million after 10, 12 years. Um, that's the industry is different compared to 20 years ago. When people are still trying to um, get into medical school or become a lawyer because they are getting more money. How much? Like three hundred thousand dollars. They have to have like three point eight GPA. They have to pay the tuition for medical school and takes like ten years. Now it's different. 
if you really want to make money, computer science. Or this, it's not too bad, right? 200 some bucks, it's not too bad. A lot of times, you only had, I was talking with Kyle a, lot, a couple of days ago. Um, think about that. You may have a lot of problems recently. For example, not everyone, but for example, you, you hate your roommate. You don't want to move that often. You hate your car. You don't like you know, the place you are living in right now. Or other problems are bothering you every day. Actually, there's a solution, which is if you have $80,000 a year, all the problems are solved. Very easy. You don't even need like 120, 150, 80, done. You hit your roommate, just buy a house. You hit your car, just buy a new car. So you just need a job. $80,000, start with, okay? That's why it comes to college. If you don't come to college, you find other jobs. You can still make a lot of money. For example, you probably don't know that. For UPS, for the person who's delivering, packages, they can still make a hundred thousand dollars, still know that, but they have to work over, 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 uh, like over the time, 10 hours a day or something. And a friend, he used a smartphone to track how many miles he walked, he walks mm -hmm. every day to deliver the package, you know the number, 10 miles every day. So you can still get 80, 100, thousand dollars a year but you can see the cost you're paying you're damaging your knees or hips the joints um i'll be super exhausted but you will never you don't want to go to the gym anymore but that's actually hurting you um so think about that if you are working if you work for a company um you just work for eight hours and after that since you just oh almost just sit there for the whole day, have some meetings with your colleagues, and then you are done for the day, then go to the gym. And you get, you know, muscles, you can run on the treadmill, whatever you want to do. Um, I think that's a better way to, that's a better career compared to just physical. Physical is totally fine if you like it. Uh, I'm just saying, since you pay the tuition to the college, you want to find, you want to, do something you like, so you have more choices. Uh, doesn't matter what you are doing. What matters is if you have the choices, if you can, if you can make the choice. A lot of times you cannot make the choice. You have to do it. So you have to pay the bills next month. Um, work for the company for the industry is a pretty good job, and analog, you know, doing cadence is a very nice career. <laughs> Um, the, the more popular one is actually Verilog, just coding RTLs, and then synthesize everything to ASIC instead of hand drawing everything. Uh, there are more openings on the market. Uh, I highly recommend that as well. If you don't want to, if you know how to do it, it's easy, very easy to transfer to different places. And also, we have a class called CE 343. No, 433, sorry. The embedded devices. They are going to code IPGAs and Verilog. So there's another different direction. If you know how to do IPGAs and Verilog, you can find a job easily as well. There are so many companies that are hiring people who knows how to do that, even more, more than this, like hand drawing everything. But they are kind of like very similar. One is more analog. You have to hand draw something. One is digital. You just need to synthesize everything using the tool, like cadence or synopsis in the company. Um, I had a conversation with one of my friends. He, he had his master's degree in uh, electrical computer engineering many years ago, and he started working with a company called High Silicon. So that company designed all these digital chips, and you know the older can come from Intel. You know, Intel, I can, you can imagine that. You know, these people are getting super lazy. They just uh, contract these projects out to the small companies in China. So he, um, you know, read the code for the logic. And then they have another team to synthesize that. And they have another team to route it, to make it into an IC chip with all the layers. 
and then another team to send it out to TSMC to for fabrication. So he just works for the coding part, RTL, Verilog. Um, the pressure is high, I can tell you. So that's how you can expect in the company. But maybe in the US it's different. Has to work for 10 hours a week, uh, 10 hours every day. And you know, usually from 9 a.m., can be longer actually, from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. He uh, gets back home every day, probably around 10, 9 p.m., 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, because there's a, if you cannot get your part done, all the other teams cannot do anything else. They have to wait for you. So pressure is high, and he's trying to find a way out, but no solution yet. Because there are old contracts. So there might be an option, which is he can, with his team lead, probably they can form another team and separate out from the big company, which is high silicon, and form another company so they can code whatever they want to code. They can design whatever they want to design. But they may be running short on the number of contracts, uh, which will directly affect their salary. And I think this is similar to software engineering as well, coding, right? When you're young, you can still code, but we have families, you become an old fart. I don't know if you are still able to code until like midnight, you still have that spirit, or if you want to become a manager, then if the boss has been replaced, and nobody will know you anymore, and they won't need you anymore because you're not doing the actual work. Manager, right? Managing people. We don't need managers. We need people who can code until midnight. So they are young, they can still do that, you know, but you cannot afford that since you have families, you have kids. Um, this may become that situation until uh, when you are like 40 years old still like 10 to 15 years to go, but you should expect that, okay? But there are many, there are many ways to get out from that situation, I believe. Uh, you can, you know, if you have earned enough amount of money, actually, yes, if you go to Google, you code there for 10 years, you probably have a few million dollars. And you can retire, actually. You can find a teaching college a coming college to teach if you like. Or you can just directly buy a couple of houses and rent it to college students. <laughs> you guys are paying rent every month. You work so hard, you got 2,000 bucks, and you're paying 600 bucks to that landlord. Hi, you. I'm taking my money every month. So you guys can become a landlord in the future, right? Just collecting rent and let them hate you, but you are having fun. Um, if you have $2 million, you buy four houses, you're collecting 2,000 bucks for each. You're getting 8,000 bucks every month. Nice. So that's another way you can enjoy your life. And if you wanna get a graduate school, you know, for me, I have to, but you guys, you have more options. Since I was a uh, immigrant, um, but also I only, the only career I want to do as a professor because we have summer, summer breaks and winter breaks. I have pretty much four months break every year and I can do anything I want to do, uh, during the break. Or, um, if I keep learning new things, I can still get contracts in the industry. Um, you know, there are many benefits to be a professor, but it takes a long time to be a professor and the pay is low. So. Uh, you just have to rely on your new, your own skills to get extra contracts. That's the only way you can become rich as a professor. You can still get the two hundred thousand dollars, but you have to work super hard and self motivated as well. Otherwise, it's not really. But you it, it, you are comfortable. You know that's. Uh, it takes another like two years in the U.S. for a master degree, another four years to get a PhD. If you you have a couple of publications and you know how to uh, write a good program, it's not difficult to find a professorship job in a university, in a college, or here, anywhere, right? It's not difficult. Um, so it depends on what you like, okay? So another one. 
cadence. Let's look at cadence tutorials. I'll let you know the scope of this class is not required because I didn't uh, create all the tutorials with cadence. I just didn't have time. I did this thing like it took me two months, about not two months, probably four, four to five weeks um, last year. So to, to create all these detailed tutorials, not this one, but see here, so all these tutorials. Um, so the tool is not a cadence, but you, it's a good tool to start with. Okay, it's called Electric VISI. It's free, open source, doesn't like cadence, it's super expensive. And it works well with LT Spice. So you can do the simulation over there and come over here to do the layout. So you're actually hand drawing the chips. So that's a resistor. It's an unwell resistor. So you can lay out a resistor on the little chip. Have you taken Engineering 201 there? You? Okay, good. And eventually, it will be an ALU. It's a heart of the CPU, but a simplified version. So there are different functions. You are going to use a bus, BUS, a bus, and a multiplexer to select which line you want to use for which function. And that's a circuit. That's a chip layout on the silicon of the ALU. No way, that's just the gate. It's just a bit inverter. No, it's a bit what? So every single one is one bit. It's a, a bit inverter, it is. Yeah, by looking at the circuit, it is a inverter, but a bit inverter. As a schematic of the ALU, and you can simulate it. And that's the layout of the ALU. A lot. See, that's the A bit on gate, probably. And you have other different functions. I need to make the connections by yourself manually. Yeah, you have to go through this for once in your life. And it's repeatable. <laughs> it's, if you follow, you can definitely get there. I haven't seen any problems last uh, term, but you'll hate it because too many wires. It's tedious. So the that's the most uh, often common I got, even on their lab report. They have a conclusion. It's so tedious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you have to go through this as the ones. Okay. So as an engineer, you have to handle these tedious work. Sometimes just repeating, repeating. Hand drawing, repeating, okay? And I think I'm gonna give you some assignments for using Cadence as well, because that's something I want you guys to learn. Go to tutorials, Cadence, and I have all these tutorials here available. They are not the labs um, you are getting credit from, but I will give you some assignments to let you guys lay out something over there. And if you take my senior son next uh, fall, I will let you guys fabricate a TSMC 180 nanometer chip over there. Okay. Homework assignments for most of you guys know how to do it in my class. So you turn it in, you fold it. So for example, that's your homework, right? You have all your work in, inside. And you fold it like this. Put everything together, put a stapler here. And put a name outside. So I can hand it back to you after I grade it. And nobody will see your grades and your work. Office hours, I already mentioned that. LT Spice, all of you had some experience of that as well, I guess. And um, exams. We are going to fi have five exams, no, two exams, midterm and final. Midterm is October the 15th, and final is December the 16th. And you see the times over here and here. 
so you can plan ahead for your Christmas break or booking your flight or something, okay? This is the last day for the final exam. And unfortunately, our exam is on the last day as well. It's Thursday. <laughs> Pretty late. It's not my fault. Not my fault. Yeah, in the morning is better, so you can still drive back. Okay. Um, and we have a mini break, 1st of October. Have some plan? Anyway, so there's another thing I want to do today, actually, before we quit. We still have like 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. So I don't know you guys, where are you guys from? US, Alaska, David, wow, Kelvin, from where? Peonia, okay, from north and the two north to south, north, okay, here, Roxy. New Mexico? Cal? Oh, here. Where? Here? China? Okay. Cortez. Cortez. 8,000 people there and still have a DQ which we don't have. Shame. Brian? Where? Oh, okay. What's that called? Can I say it again? Kirtland. Okay. Okay, so all of you guys are from this area though. Mm -hmm. Four corners, yes, yeah. Only cows from here. Yeah. Any questions you may have? So, I arrived at uh, Las Vegas and in 2012 for my PhD, and then I uh, after I graduated, I found a job in Irvine for postdoc, and then I just came over here in 2017. Uh, it's just too expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's a good place, but it's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. I rented a one bedroom apartment over there when I was a postdoc, like 2,200 bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anxious every day. Yeah, so China is very similar, has a similar map, actually. China looks like um, this. Okay. And um, it's super flight here. It's just the agriculture because you know, Tibet has all these mountains and snow. So it's from a river called uh, Yellow River. So there are two main rivers in, in China, Yellow River and Yangtze River in the south. And uh, Yellow River was the one flushed this plain for thousands of years. So this area has all the ag agriculture. And I think this place probably has one, two, three, like, 300 million people here, <laughs> the same population in the US. And then this area is flatter compared to the other ones. So this part probably has like 100 million people. And the rest of 
400 or 300 million people are living in the rest of China. So the northeast is very cold, snowing a lot. And here's desert. And here's Tibet, you know, very high elevation snow, but beautiful. It's very similar compared to Colorado, I think, just mountains, rivers, forests. Beautiful. So the only place, if I have to go back and live in China, the only place I want to go is here. There's a province called Yunnan province. Uh, same view as Colorado. Same elevation. No air pollution. Just beautiful place. Here is super, crowd, super crowded, but the economy here is probably 90% of the entire country. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm from here. Very crowded. My city has five, 5 million people, and it's not a big city. It's a five-tier city, not even the fourth tier, third tier. It's fourth, five, fifth tier, 5 million people. All right. Okay. Nice to see everyone today, and I'll see you on Tuesday for the lab. Okay.